A new study by the Journal of Natural Science says that if by the end of the century, climate change will total up to 83 million deaths because of climate-related causes. Yeah, they're wrong. I'm Hi, Ben. My name's Ember. Um, in 2021, you said that the potential rise of global temperatures by 4 degrees Celsius due to climate change is, quote, not an emergency, and even made fun of top scientists for calling climate change a climate emergency. A new study by the Journal of Natural Science says that if by the end of the century, climate change will total up to 83 million deaths because of climate-related causes. Yeah, they're wrong. I'm Sorry, go ahead, but continue, but I'll explain why. Go ahead. I'm wondering, Ben, why you believe that climate change is not an emergency. Okay, because they're wrong. The reason that they are wrong is because all of these studies are done in the absence of mitigating measures. So there's two ways you can deal with it. One is mitigation, which is we all stop driving cars, we stop using electricity, we don't have kids anymore, right? We, we really cut down on our carbon usage in ways that are catastrophic to the world economy. And what it really mostly does is it says to people in the developing world, hey, you're screwed. In order for us to take the mitigation measures that would be necessary in order to dramatically lower the trajectory of global climate change, you'd have to get China to sign on, which they will not. You'd have to get India to sign on, which they will not. Those are the two largest carbon-based emitters on planet Earth. And we live in a geopolitical world in which a carbon emission from China counts the same as a carbon emission from the United States. And as I've said before and been mocked for it, the simple fact of the matter is over the course of the next hundred years, when you see all these maps, it's like this area will be flooded and all those people will be dead. No, because they won't be living there. Because as it turns out, when the tide rises, people move inland. This is what has been happening throughout human history. Slow moving crises are not crises, they're problems, not emergencies. I'm a mathematician and a physicist here, a double major, and I also just won the most prestigious award in the country to pursue research at any institution I want, That's the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship. So I think I'm pretty you know, qualified to say that most of what you're saying is based on like old data. Um, but my question to you, I and so I want you all to like, realize last that. Month, but sure. um, like, for example, gender identity disorder, that's the DSM-4, bro. We use the DSM-5 now for psychologists to be able to talk about... I literally about cited the DSM-5 in the speech, and it's called gender dysphoria, which is I a term that I use throughout the speech, not gender you identity disorder. You sound like disorder, a bozo, bro. The nice thing about having the question, several small children the is I don't feel is, the necessity to have my masculinity If we're using a Western like colonial you. idea of gender, then why should it apply? If we're using... Because the gender binary is a Western, colonial, is a Western colonialist framework of gender. You're you know? right. Men and women don't exist in any other culture. No, 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 no. I'm, no. Think right. about Native American. Nailed it. Third gender people. I'm not saying that. Third gender people exist in Native American societies, Western African societies, like Southern Native American societies, like Mexico. So in other places that are not white dominated, and they like the United incorrect. States or Europe. And so, so you're saying, saying white, biological so non-white people, I'm a mathematician and a physicist. You cannot so tell what me. The, so I have a question. And also you're not a biologist. So I have a question. I'm 20. As a mathematician not, and a physicist, what in the hell do you know about human biology? And you got your law degree from Harvard. Answer. What do you know about biology? You got your law degree from Harvard. And frankly, and frankly, I would ask another question. If your logic is so flawed as a mathematician and a physicist, I would suggest that whichever institution gave you an award, re revoke it immediately. Hey guys, if you like smart, nuanced, left-right conversations and interviews in a world where there are very few of those. Do you want to hear both sides of an issue? Do you want to hear people debate it out? Then you need to subscribe to our new YouTube channel by clicking the link in the description or the pop-up button that appears on your screen.